So now I finally want to um, look at this step with closure option that JFLAP has that we haven't looked at until now. Um, let me start by just showing you again. This is my um, NFA, right, because there is no, say, out transition from Q2 on A. So, um, so Hind would say this is not a DFA, but it is an NFA. Um, and this particular NFA accepts one A, or sorry, zero or more A's followed by an odd number of B's. And I'm going to change it like we did before. I'm going to add another transition from Q0 to Q1 that's on that um, gives me a free jump on a lambda jump. So Q0 to Q1, I let go, and then I either hit enter or just click, and I get that lambda. Remember, that's a lowercase lambda here in our textbook. It's an uppercase lambda, but we are happy. Um, and just so I can squidge in some information, let's move Q2 down here again. Um, and what I want to show you is this, this different kind of trace. You can also trace under the input. Um, you can trace by uh, doing a step with closure, right? And let me just give you an idea of what's going on there when we do it. Essentially, what happens is at every step, you say, ooh, can I take any lambdas? And if you can, you do. So, for example, when we start on this um, NFA, we start at Q0, but we could also take this free lambda jump to Q1. So we start at Q0 with ABB, right? So the in black is unprocessed letters. Um, but we can also take this free lambda jump. So we really start with two possible scenarios. Either I'm at Q0 with ABB to process, or I took the lambda jump and I'm at Q1 with ABB to process. Okay. And from there, we can take one step. And let's just start wa watching this and see what happens. If I say step with closure and I say I'm processing the string ABB, did I mention that before? That's what we're doing. Then just as I said, oh, let's squidge this down so that you can see both of my windows at once. There we go. Um, immediately upon starting, because we're doing step with closure, we have two possible starts. We can start at Q0, or we can take that free lambda jump and we start at Q1. Now, you can see from my diagram here, after I take that first step, well, from Q1, there's no way to go if I have an A. I can't take any lambda jumps. I can't take any A's. So this one's going to fail. The second option, if I'm at Q0, and I stayed at Q0, I didn't take the lambda jump, then I can process that A and, um, and end up at Q0. But if I process the A and end up at Q0, I could also have a free jump to Q1. So that's what's going on here, right? So what's going to happen when I click Step is this, this option, where I was at Q1, is going to turn red though maybe not in the right order. And I'm going to get two more possible abilities that are going to be sort of this, this pale blue that say where I could be. So let's do a step. And just like I said, this one has failed. But it's now saying, well, you could be at Q0 having processed the A but not the BB. Or you could be at 1 having processed the A but not the BB. So essentially at every step we are processing one letter and then seeing how far we can get, right? So if I'm at Q0, so this one's going to go away in our next step. If I'm at Q0 and I see a B, um, well, I've already taken all the possible lambdas, so I need to process this B and then take any lambdas I can. So Q0, process the B, oh, and there's no more lambdas, I'll end up at Q1. If I'm at Q1 and I process the B, I end up at Q2 and there's no more lambdas. So now you can see we just have two possibilities coming up. And if I step, then... I'm at Q1 having processed A, B, and still needing to process B. That's this situation here. Or I'm at Q2 having processed A, B, and still uh, having yet to process B. If there were another lambda coming out of here or coming out of here, that would make things way more complicated, but there's not. So we can take one more step, process one more letter, and when we process the next letter, we see that this path worked. If I want, I can um, click on um, this path now and say trace. 
and you can see that it shows me all my movements, but it sort of ignores the lambda jump. So it says, well, I started at Q0 with ABB, right? All of it unprocessed. I don't know how well you can see the gray in here. It's sort of hard for me to see. Um, and then I ended up at Q1 having processed the A. I ended up at Q2 having processed the A and the B, and I ended up at Q1 again having processed all three letters. So it sort of ignores lambda jumps in the trace. It's not quite as useful as a trace, but it's it's still okay. Um, and of course, if I do one more step, you'll see this guy changing into red, right? Now, if you want to make it really nasty, we could say, oops, let's close the simulator. We could say add a another um, lambda transition from Q1 to Q2. So let's just click. So now we have a lambda transition from Q1 to Q2 also. So now we've got to be able to take some double jumps as well. Now, I'm not going to show you this whole trace because it's just way too complicated, but I'll show you a couple of steps. So if you look what's going to happen, as soon as I get to Q0, I'm actually going to have three possible starting places if I do the, um, the step with closure, right? I could start at Q0, but I could also immediately take the lambda jump and start at Q1, or I could immediately take the lambda jump and start at Q2. So in my little diagram, I've sort of said, look, I could start at Q0, or I could start at Q1, or I could start at Q2. Right? And if we actually do the step with closure, and I say I want to do ABB as my string, you can see immediately we start with three different options. Let me shrink this down a little bit just so you can see everything. Right? Immediately we start with three possible options. We could be at state Q0, we could be at state Q1, we could be at state Q2. In all three cases, we haven't processed anything yet. And then if you see what happens after I take one step, well, look, these two options go to red. Um, but if I po process the A on this loop, right, I process the next letter in my, in my string on this loop, then I also can do one lambda jump or one two lambda jumps, right? So in this case, every time I process, I take all the lambda jumps after I've processed one letter. So I think when I hit um, step, these two guys are going to turn red, and this one is going to turn into three, so we should have five things on the screen. Yuck. And that's what happens, right? And so in the next state, these two have gone out, and we could be at Q0 having processed the A, at Q1 having processed the A, or Q2 and processed the A. So it's kind of nasty, but it's also kind of, um, uh, interesting because you can at least see um, if you're taking um, the lambda closure, where do you get?